Hello Dave is brought to you ad-free by my supporters on Patreon. Become a Patreon yourself and get your name listed as a supporter at the end of every video by following the link in the video description. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Hello Dave with Down to Earth Astronomy. I hope you've had a wonderful weekend. It is once again Monday and that of course means that we need to have a look at what has been going on in both Elite, in space and on the channel. And we have actually a lot to talk about this week, and also about some of the stuff that's coming out um, this week. Um, the most noticeable um, announcement this week, from Frontier at least, is of course the, um, the very short notice on the launch of the 3.2 update, or what sometimes may be referred to as the Q3 update. There's been a bit of confusion between these Q numbers and the patch numbers, but basically which quarter they launched in. Um, so this is going to be the quarter three update, which is going to be the 3.2 update. And this, what exactly it's going to include, um, we don't really know a lot about. But Frontier has said that they're going to release some of it on um, on Gamescon, which is running, I think it's from tomorrow and all the way to the 25th, if I recall. I can't remember exactly, but at least it's going to be doing this week. And as far as I know, there's going to be a 24 hour delay between when the information is released to the people on Gamescon and when it's going to be released to the public. Why they decide to do that, I'm not 100% sure. But that means that during this week, we are most likely going to get some uh, some information about what is actually going to be included in the patch. They did make a launch, of, it was supposed to be a trailer for the patch. It was more like a date announcement um, trailer thing video, but they did show something in there that kind of like okay so most of the videos the last half of the video is basically just the elite icon and the date and the the patch name and that stuff so that's the last half of the video so that's not a whole lot of interest in then the first part of the video is consistent of two different objects the first object is the elite dangerous logo where we get some uh, close-up shots of that very close-up shots and then there's some images of what looks like a large guardian structure floating in space above a gas giant I think there are a total of three clips, each lasting a couple of seconds. Um, total less than seven seconds at least. But it seems to be like a, a large structure with some arms going out of it. Um, there's a lot of speculations about what it is and, and I could probably go on for, for hours and hours about what that could be. Um, one thing that I, I think it might very well be, now that we've seen large guardian structure in space, I think it's going to be some kind of guardian either station mega ship kind of thing um the reason why i think that is is because in the q4 update we're gonna get the fleet carriers and there's obviously going to be a lot of new gameplay mechanics revolved around this these new fleet carriers and there's also a lot of other stuff so i think uh, to try and and test these new game some of the new game mechanics out um, that they, we might be able to go out and find some structures that maybe have some of those game mechanics like in a test version in them. We saw that did something vaguely similar before the Thargoids were introduced. They introduced ship launched fighters. And then later on the Thargoids were introduced with of course the Thargons. So so I think that the, the launch of ship launched fighters to try and do a test to see what happens, how does this work having um two separate ships that are actually being controlled by one mothership, kind of like having those two linked together. How does that whole mechanic work? Um, and th they could kind of test that with the ship launch fighters and then use that to implement into the um, into the Thargoids where they were implemented in, in the following patch. But as you can see, those two game mechanics are very different, but on a fundamental level, they are kind of the same. And, and I... I have a suspicion that we're going to see something very similar in this patch where we're going to see some um, some new gameplay features maybe that's on a fundamental level will have something to do with what are going to come in Q4 at least. Um, and then of course there's the leaked names for the two uh, yeah two ships uh, the Crate Phantom and the other one that I can never remember the name of. Um, Chief? No we have Chieftain and Challenger. No I can't remember. I can't remember the name but there was another ship that uh, we do believe is going to come and it's I, it seems like it's going to be a variant of the existing ones a bit like the type 6 and the keelback like yeah 
kind of the same, kind of the same, but yet different. So, uh, I, but again, we don't have any hard uh, hard statistics on it. We really don't even have an image or anything, a render, or nothing. We just have names, and from the names, we're just making some guesses. So, but again, all this stuff, and I would expect more, is probably going to be released on announced this week. Um, at least we'll have two since uh, Tuesday next week is when they're launching on the twenty eighth. So. Um, yeah, interesting stuff, new patch coming to Elite, and uh, yeah. Then also this week, Frontier has sent out emails to everybody who owns a player minor faction or player group in Elite. Um, regarding reservation of names to um, um, to the new squad routes. And it, it's basically just a link to a Google form. Um, and before people ask, no. Uh, I'm not going to post the link because specifically Frontiers ask that these links do not get spread because they only want the people who actually have the player factor to be able to reserve names at, the, at this point. Um, but at least that means that I've already put in um, reservations for names for, for the squadron that, uh, that I'm planning to create um, and tags and everything. Um, but basically, if you own, if you are the owner of a player faction, uh, do check the, your your email that you signed up with because if you want to have that uh, name reserved when you start uh, and want to create a squadron, you have to go and fill out the Google form. And it seems that one interesting thing it seems like there was a separate form for both PC, Xbox, and um, and uh, PC, Xbox, and PlayStation. Is what I'm looking for, um, which indicate that the squadrons might not be cross-platform. I. Uh, that's going to be a little interesting uh, if they're not, but uh, yeah. Anyway, we will have to um, we'll have to wait and see what happens. But it, it seems at this point, since you have to reserve names on the separate platforms, that at least Squadrons is not going to be cross-platform, um, which is a little I don't know. I I would really have hoped that they would have done something cross-platform, but again, I guess um, that the uh, Sony has uh, has thrown a wrench into uh, into that plan. So I think that was what I had on uh, on Elite this week. Um, in terms of uh, our space news, we had the Paga Solar Probe was launched this week. Um, it's a probe that's going to be over the next seven years. It's going to be flying towards the sun. Well, it's going to be a approaching an orbit around the sun, and it's going to do some very detailed studies on the formation of solar flares, a, a topic that I find immensely interesting. Um, if, if you didn't know, I wrote my master thesis on the, um, on the magnetic field structures leading up to a solar flare. So what exactly happens with the magnetic fields in the area where solar flare erupts? And, and, and I did that by having some um, decent resolution pictures of the magnetic field strength on, uh, on the sun, and then did some a ton of fancy programming to extrapolate how the magnetic field would then look up in the higher layers of the atmosphere, and um, and then basically we could sit and see. So what would happen if we, if the magnetic, doing that extrapolation, we, we, I made some some assumptions, and then we could run it through a simulation, see what would happen, and if and then we could compare it to what happened in real life, and then we could sit and 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 fine tune our assumptions until we got something that vaguely looked like what actually happened in real life, and then we could use that to try to figure out what the hell was going on. Now, this is, of course, an ongoing uh, research. I spent about a year and a half on it, but this is something that's still going on, obviously, with the with the Parker Solar Probe that's going to be launched. Um, and it's going to um, to fly within this is 6 million kilometers of the sun, putting it inside the uh, the corona. So it's going to get very, very close, and it's going to get very, very hot. Um, and, and interesting... Thing. The reason why it takes it seven years, I mean, it, it shouldn't take seven years to fly to the sun, right? But it's actually more difficult to fly towards, uh, inside the solar system than out. Uh, when we fly out of the solar system, you basically just have to, uh, to boost your orbit up. Um, and then you can do some gravitational assist along the way out. Um, and they kind of do the same thing here, just opposite. So normally when you want to boost, you're out of the solar system, you use the planet to slingshot you up. You kind of do the maneuver just backwards, where you would use the planet to slow you down. So you yeah, use um, Venus and and Mercury a few times to do these slingshot maneuvers around it, or reverse slingshot maneuvers to break the orbit, the, yeah, break the orbit of the probe down. So it slowly narrows its orbit, so it gets closer and closer and tighter and tighter around the sun until it gets into its final elliptical orbit, where 
Um, because it's got to go so close, it can't stay there for uh, an extended period. So what it will do is put into an elliptical orbit. So it'll come in, it will do its measurements, and it'll come out and get time to cool off, and it'll come in again and then do these measurements over and over and over again. Um, so yeah, apparently it's, uh, it, I just think it's fun that it's more difficult to, uh, to fly towards uh, the sun than it is to fly, uh, fly away from it. But again, to, uh, to quote the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, that uh, the trick to flying is to throw yourself at the ground and miss. So uh, I guess that's what they're trying to do, throw yourself towards the sun and, uh, and miss. <laughs> okay, so um, other things happening this week. Uh, tomorrow, of course, um, live stream, Elite Dangerous live stream. Um, and uh, as I have announced on my Discord server, this week is going to be a community event, like a D2EA community event, not going to be the in-game community event. But we're going to do some um, some fun and games. Um, first plan is we're going to head to uh, to some uh, to some mountains on a planet, and we're going to do an SRV raid. So we're going to get a bunch of people together, uh, everybody who wants to join meet up on that planet and we're going to do a race to the top to the summit of the player of the mountain see who gets there first without getting their SRV destroyed and rolling down the hill and i'll almost guarantee you there will be SRVs rolling down the hill um i'll probably try to get out in a fighter and get as much uh, video footage of it as i can to um kind of be a a flying camera drone during the uh, the event uh, i might particip participate i guess that depends on the number of people that uh, shows up there are more info on locations and everything on Discord, so follow the link if you want to, to join. Um, and yeah, so, and after that, I think the plan is that we're gonna head to a high G world. Um, we have, a, I think, almost 5G planet pretty close by to where we do the, uh, the hill climb. Um, and there we're all gonna start uh, from orbit and turn off shield boots or shield generators if people have them and uh, see who can get and land on the surface station the quickest. So that's going to be interesting, and I'll almost promise you that we, and, and in that situation we will also see ships crashing into the planet and, uh, and blowing up. So uh, hopefully that will be a lot of fun, and I uh, hope to see a lot of you guys to, uh, to join, which is tomorrow, the usual time. Event starts at 7 o'clock in-game time. And I recommend people are there a little bit beforehand, because we are going to start pretty sharp. Hopefully, um, so yeah, so be there. Location again is on Discord, so come over there and look at the news channel and just scroll up, there's the announcement of the event there with all the information you need. Um, but talking about live streams, um, I'm pretty sure some of you will have noticed that I've been streaming quite a bit over the weekend and I've been streaming uh, No Man's Sky. Of course, there was the recent update with the uh, No Man's Sky Next, which has received a lot of positive review. Which was, of course, why I decided to give the game a go. I did play the game during the original launch, um, or after the original launch. And I actually went back and looked at my, my Steam statistics. I done, back then, I played the game for exactly 11 hours. Well, I got exactly-ish 11 hours. And then I just left it. I got burned out, didn't want to do it anymore. I kind of felt like I've done what there was to do. And, and at least I didn't find it that uh, engaging anymore. It was becoming a little repetitive. Um... But I must admit, now I'm again about 11 hours in after the uh, after the launch, and I am enjoying it. I'm enjoying it a lot. So I'm trying to um, to to live stream as much of this as I can, um, simply because I've tried in the past to do kind of let's plays videos, but I always end up having a hard time. I spend a lot of time on the edit on those because I it's always difficult. I think to to both keep the flow of of kind of the the story that I was going through, what was happening, and all that stuff. Um, yet, try to keep the videos at a, like, so they don't get 20 minutes or half an hour long. They always tend to get very long, those videos. So, so that's why I decided to try, and instead of doing separate, like, let's play kind of videos on it, um, to do some more uh, live streams, because it's a lot easier, and it's a lot more natural to live stream than it is for me to do let's play videos. Um, so you could probably expect to see a lot more hello, uh, hello, <laughs> no man's sky um, live streams coming in uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks, and I guess eventually I will do a, a a elite versus no man's sky. What's the pros and cons of both games? Um, and 
but I want to have a little bit more hours in in No Man's Sky before I feel like I have a good enough knowledge of what the game has to offer to actually do a, a do a proper review. And but but just the fact that that I feel that I don't have a proper understanding of the game yet shows how much the game has developed since um, uh, since launch. I mean, 11 hours in after launch, I felt like it was getting repetitive, and I've just done what I wanted to do, and I left the game there. Now I'm 11 hours in again, and I feel like I've just scratched the surface of what there is to do. Um, so definitely there is a, a lot of improvements to that game. Um, and people seem to really have uh, have enjoyed it. There are definitely some, um, there's been some very experienced No Man's Sky players who have been helping me out along. And there's also been a lot of players who have um, have, have, have offered their help to, uh, to, to join in, in multiplayer sessions, and they could then help me out. And, so far, I've, I've declined it. Not, I mean, I'm very, uh, very happy that you guys want to to help me along with the game, but I also want to get a <laughs> proper experience of the game if I am to do a, a review of it. If I just get in and get boosted up till the higher ranks, I don't really get the, um, I don't really get the progression through the game. I don't get the uh, the natural, um, the natural involvement of the game. Um, as it was hopefully intended to uh, to be for the player, and and that makes it a little bit more difficult for me to uh, to review and do a comparison of it later on if I'm planning to do that. And I am also enjoying this very very much. I'm not by any means rushing through the game. I'm really taking my time and um, and exploring the things that I want to explore. There is a lot to explore. I mean, I think I recall after the first after I jumped to the first new system, I found at least two planets that say, oh, I want to visit that planet and that planet, and the first time I landed on it, there was, I think, three or four different uh, objects just, like, in my immediate vicinity where I landed. And I thought, I gotta have a go and go and look at that because that looks cool. Uh, big cave or some tech buried somewhere I have to dig up or something. It was, I mean, I'm really enjoying the game right now and I'm definitely gonna live stream it um, a lot more. And of course, I know that some of you guys might not be interested in... Um, in No Man's Skies, um, which is why I have then... I'm gonna keep the Tuesday live stream spot, which is the usual spot where I would normally live stream that my once a week. I'm gonna keep that as elite, dangerous for now. And then all the No Man's Skies is kind of gonna be extras, like it's gonna be bonus things. Um, so for those of you who are just here for the elite content, you're getting the exact same amount of, of elite content um, as you would usually do. But for those of you who also like No Man's Sky, well, you get some bonus No Man's Skies videos, uh, sorry, live streams uh, from time to time. Um, but yeah. So, um, I think uh, I think that's pretty much it. I uh, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Quite a long, but again, we had a lot. To, I had a lot to talk about, a lot I want to cover. Um, I hope we're gonna see a lot of you guys to the event tomorrow. And uh, if I don't, then well, thanks a lot for watching. And remember to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and until next time, I'll see you guys in space.